Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Gonzalez from Chile and I'm currently the maintainer of the PostgreSQL output plugin for Fluentbit. In the last 10 years of my life, I've been working with data processing and log processing for reports, stats, analysis and everything, infosec reporting even. So this time I'm going to talk to you about the output plugin for Fluentbit. But what does it mean? This means that I'm going to explain to you a lot of stuff related to how to process the logs on the Fluentbit site and push the logs inside PostgreSQL. So let's start the talk. One of the motivations to pay uh, start this uh, plugin and a year and a half ago, it was to play with the PostgreSQL type JSONB, which is apparently a representation of JavaScript object notation. Uh, we needed to create basically to process uh, years of logs and find one line between millions of files wasn't that easy. Uh, at that time, we needed to generate users report, info search reports for, I don't know, administration management stuff like that, uh, uh, and maybe create some stuff from starting from these logs. Uh, like I don't know, in summer we have a lot of visits on this site, or this summer users started to log in more or stuff like that. People can ask questions. In the beginning, the initial idea was. Uh, to follow this simple process, fluent bit collect data, collect logs from different sources using different input plugins, and send them directly into PostgreSQL into a table, and from there you will be storing logs. But with time and talking with my colleagues, we finally decided that a best idea would be keep fluent bit sending logs into PostgreSQL, but first process them using PLSQL language. This will be allow us to separate files in between different tables or maybe preprocessing something or even just create some rules. We have the logs inside uh, our PostgreSQL or in our case inside our PLSQL. Uh, Fluentbit will send the data as the data logs as JSON objects which means that we will have a big JSON plus some data. In our case it will contain at uh, time, a timestamp and a tag, plus the JSON object with everything. In the main table, we will sort the raw data into one main table, meaning it's the table option in the in the plugin. And we decided to process with using PLSQL to process and split the data into many tables, one table, or just uh, split the data for the table, or using store them in the same table. That's not an issue. So we can use any uh, object inside, any field inside the JSON object to decide when to store the data, where to store it, uh, split it by using some special handle or anything like that. So we can take the decision based on the JSON object. But what is JSONB or JSON on PostgreSQL? Well, JSON is just JavaScript object notation. In, in, in our PostgreSQL, there's an SQL technical report that you can check out on the slide right here, uh, the which is the implementation of JSON on PostgreSQL. The idea is you can have JSON or JSONB, but we use JSONB because it's worth indexing, which means that it's easy to create the data and keep it indexed because we know that index create faster queries, right? And it's easy to query. JSON is just, you can select data and a field inside, in this case, date from the table and you will get the data. But one of the biggest reasons is to use JSON is that it is really, really easy to export and use in other apps. In this case, uh, we can export uh, JSON to any option or application we want to process data or to process logs from time to time or anything. How we can configure this uh, plugin? The main configuration, you will need uh, obviously the host because you will may not have PostgreSQL running on local host and the port. People will usually don't change the port, but maybe you will need to change it. Uh, user and password, you can put it on the configuration, but we strongly recommend use pgpass file because it's the best option and secure for in this case, the database and a table. The table will be created if it's not exist on the plugin when it's a startup and connects to PostgreSQL, so you don't need to create it. 
and we support CockroachDB using CockroachDB equal true. This is a uh, CockroachDB support to PostgreSQL protocol, uh, but some queries don't, uh, they don't support some functions and some queries may change, so we created some special option for it. There's a full list of options for the plugin, some are interesting, some are not, you can test them and please report any bug on it. So how to query the data? The data, as we said before, is stored on JSON uh, with two fields, tag, time, and data containing the JSON object. Here is an example of data of one record from Fluentbit using the tag CPU.0, which is just using the uh, input plugin from Fluentbit CPU and limit it to one. You will see the data over there. It's nice easy and simple but in this case with Apache logs you can see something else more interesting in this case we use the tag to separate the, uh, the logs tag Apache and you will see that we contain the code date everything that comes using the Apache 2 parser from Fluentbit this is what's using the tail plugin into some processing Apache logs but years of logs we needed to analyze three years of Apache logs, which is a really, really big tax because we had uh, around one terabyte of data and we needed to process it in just two weeks. So for this, we decided to use the tail plugin, which needed some updated and we added some option into the documentation to process the PostgreSQL, uh, the Apache logs into PostgreSQL. We used the PLSQL language to process and split the data into different tables, which could because otherwise we will have billions of rows inside just one table. But in our case, we use partition tables per month, which allow us to create proper indexes and query just one amount. And this query for month took less than one second, which is really, really amazing because in other databases are store logs, this will obviously create more than one second because we have a lot of data. So let's deploy uh, inside Kubernetes our Fluentbit plus PostgreSQL output plugin. We will provide some URL on GitHub, which is open source, and you will be able to use Customize to deploy inside. So let's have some fun. In the following configuration, you will be able to see the simple Fluentbit configuration with the include statement to add the conf files into the Fluentbit configuration. And in the file PostgreSQL customization is just a config map generator that will use the merge behavior to add output PostgreSQL conf file into the Fluentbit config map. And in the output PostgreSQL.conf file you will be able to see the host which is out of a Kubernetes deployment using a dummy password and the user Fluentbit for the database Fluentbit and table Fluentbit that will match everything to the output plugin. Okay, that was easy, but let's use some PLSQL language because we want all the data in a separate table because obviously we get logs from many places so let's partition that table because maybe in the future we will need partition by month year weeks or days and use some condition to fulfill the empty fields so let's see how this will work in our example code we will first create our table with all the data we want to store with a partition option that will be the useful in case we want to partition our table later it's important that our table is sounded by the Fluentbit user, so it's the one inserting the data. After that, we create a default partition will be the one by default. Then we can create more partition after if we want. We now create our function that will do the final insert into the table. It's important that if the JSON object doesn't come with a Kubernetes object, we can discard that row and return the full row since we want to store the data even if it's not a Kubernetes object. Then we go and start with the insert into our table. It's important to notice that we want a timestamp type and make sure it will be like that. For that we use the default column that comes with the plugin. Then we can insert the data we want in our case it will contain 
container image, container name, namespace, and host. We will add the labels and annotation just to prove that we can add JSON data too. We return a null value because we don't want to store the data in the default table but the one we decided in, in our trigger. Let's drop the trigger if exists and create our trigger for our default table. This trigger will be executed for each row inserted in the table. So for the record, we will let the functions, the PLSQL function on the slide, so you can take, take them and use them later as an example. But you can see here that we can query the data using select distance based on the container field in the Kubernetes log, and we will see that we have five records, but there's one with an empty field. Maybe we need to look into this later and see that some objects will not come with the container name or something like that. Maybe that's a bug, but you can take a look and that will be your task. But a PLSQL function can be more complicated because sometimes we may want to send the data into more than one just table. Okay, so let's see a function that can split the data depending on the tag. If the input, the input doesn't match a tag, send it to a default table. So we may be ending having three tables. So. The following function will show you how to split between tags used with Apache and tags or the data that comes with Kubernetes inside. You can use this function as example for later, but uh, go and have some fun because there's a lot of options you can use here to split your data and query it later. We will see some, this is a pre-recorded video and you will see some examples like this one querying all the fields on Kubernetes log table, which is not ideal, but we can select distinct container image from the Kubernetes logs. In this case, we will select the container image and count them. Obviously, we need to group, group by a field, in this case, container image, and see that we have a lot of container. But maybe we want to know what if we split the containers and count them by host. That's easy. Just add host and group by host. And we have all the containers split them using host. So, yeah, this is uh, nice and this is cool, but let's uh, see something else. In this case, we are going to select all the fields from the Kubernetes logs where the container image is fluent bit. Okay, there's a lot of data. Maybe that's not so useful, you know. Uh, well, but you can see it's SQL. So let's uh, do something different. What about distinct host and count all the fluent bit image running on different hosts? Okay, we have some good numbers here. I will ask why we have 13 just on master 02, but that's all. <laughs> in our in the following case, we will see some uh, Kubernetes log and split all the things that is running on master 01 with the container image fluent bit. Okay, that's a lot of information again, but maybe we need to split it or work it later. So let's see something else. What about the Apache logs? As you can see, the example we use is just for field, host, path, and code, plus the timestamp, which is a lot of data, maybe not so much data, but it will contain different fields. So as you can see, there's a lot of data, but 
uh, not so useful. Let's group by uh, the path and count them. Okay, this is a lot of data here. Mm. No, too much data doesn't say anything. Let's do something different. What about the adding the host? But yeah, let's work with the host. Okay, well, now we have the host, but still not so much information useful. So let's use something to split the data. What about path like, um, I don't know, WordPress? There's a lot of data with WordPress. Well, this is something that will happen, but we want everything that the code is 200. No. There's a lot of 200. As you can see, this is a WordPress running there. So let's see everything that it's not found. Okay, this is more nice. But you know, it's a patch logs. <laughs> you can you will have a lot of data here. So let's see some other examples with different queries. But let's see now what is in the default table through and bit. Oh, there's a lot of records. Okay, let's see the different tags we have got, we got there. And as you can see, we have Apache log that maybe didn't fit on the filter and the CPU. So let's see all the data that is has the tag CPU. Okay, you will see that there's a lot of data that didn't fit in our functions, so it was stored on the default table. That was the sense of having a default table because you may not want to lose any data at any moment of your process. So let's see some data, for example, data for the CPU, as you can see, it's just like everything on Fluentbit. As you all see, <laughs> we can do a lot of stuff with this plugin and once the data is on PostgreSQL. But there's some ideas you may want to experiment right now, like graph the data using Grafana, which is a very useful tool to create graphs. Split the data per weeks, not just month or maybe per year. If you have that amount of time, maybe a day would be useful to start testing stuff. Create some script to auto, for automatic reports per month or per year. That's also some ideas you can get from here. Uh, maybe there's something else you can add in the ideas. So please draw me a message right here. After this talk, you are now able to use Fluentbit plus PostgreSQL in its capabilities. We are now going to add SSL connection support for PostgreSQL and schema support. This will mean that you will be able to use SSL to connect to PostgreSQL. In the meantime, we hope to get some feedback from the users, you, and any kind of idea to add to the plugin. So please contact me on Twitter, and let's go with the questions.